I'm Stoic Dan. In American culture, how did we get to our current norms on possessions? Well, it's a long history. About a hundred years ago, Henry Ford's assembly line started mass production, and then advertising learned that they could sell products in volume. Today, targeted advertising is hiding inside, inside our computers with web cookies that remember what we like and don't like. Now, if we go back further, we'll see that the human need for owning stuff has not changed much in 2,000 years. We know that possessions can be tools. They can improve our lives. But from philosophy, we also know the other side of the coin, that possessions are a burden. So, like life, this becomes a balancing act. When you buy your next item, could be a car or a computer, compare the function to the price. I've been asked by people over the years, what new computer should I buy? And when I asked them what they planned to do with that computer, most of them had no idea. In other belief systems, remember that the word possessions or desire has other words. In Buddhism, grasping. In Christianity, coveting. In Stoicism, insatiability. And in Hinduism, Kama, which goes back to the earliest Vedas in the 15th century BC, Kama means sexual desire, but also desire in other aesthetic things, such as food and music. Well, the last word today comes from Ward Farnsworth in The Practicing Stoic. In chapter 5, he talks about how the mind works. He says, The pursuit of a thing is more pleasing than the possession of it. That possession of a good and familiarity with it tend to produce indifference or disgust, and that we mismeasure the value of what we have or don't have by comparing it to our expectations or to the holdings of others. Thanks for watching.